Hello, I'm Janice Karen, Director of Policy, Technology, and Innovation at the Massachusetts Health Data Consortium, or MHTC. I run our Data Governance Collaborative, also known as the DGC. We start each of our weekly meetings with a series of industry quick updates to learn about new and proposed regulations, laws, standards, industry initiatives, and other activity. Join us for this week's updates. And if you'll move to the first update, it is a biggie. U.S. Core version 6 was formally released in May. Uh, this is the version that corresponds to USDDI version 3. So we'll talk about this some more when we get to the main meeting, but most likely this is the version that will be in the final ONC rule as part of the certification for the upgrade uh, to USDDI version 3. So some of this stuff, it has a whole bunch of new stuff. Um, some of the things just to point out is that there are some additional resources for the health insurance information that's new in USCDI version 3. And they reorganized a bunch of the existing resources to make them more general because there are other things that, that they apply to. So for instance, um, they used to have a survey and then an SCOH assessment profile. And they now just have a single screening assessment profile, which covers a, a variety of different stuff in USCDI version three. Um, they've added some pregnancy related um, profiles as part of the pregnancy status, one for people who are actually pregnant and another for people who intend to become pregnant within the next year. Uh, those are actually a single, those two resources are actually mapped to a single USCDI element. So that's kind of interesting. And a, a couple of other new things. And then there were a whole bunch of changes to medication related resources um, and some new demographic information to match up with the, the demographic requirements of version three. So you can find a full change log at that link. Uh, any questions about the overview? All right, then let's move on to the next update. So this is a bill that was passed out of committee and that is moving to the house floor. It's called Providers and Payers Compete Act. It does not mean that they compete with each other. That's not the goal here, we collaborate. Um, but it's actually a, require, a new regulatory requirement that any federal regulations um, related to healthcare have to analyze, consider, address, and document that <clears throat> the impact, the expected impact of the rule on um, potential consolidation on, in either payer and provider space. So basically all the mergers and acquisition activity. So, and they specifically say that this includes the impact of alternate payment models that CMMI works on uh, and they also specifically talk about consolidation of Medicare managed organizations, ACOs, PBMs, integrated delivery systems, and others. So this is, <coughs> excuse me. So this is still, you know, this is just a bill at this point in time, um, but it has passed the, the first big hurdle and it has um, a lot of bipartisan support. So I would actually, you know, you never know what's gonna happen. Excuse my voice. You never know what's going to happen, but this one seems particularly poised to pass it. Any questions or thoughts there? All right, then let's uh, move on to the next item. So the FDA has put out a proposed rule about patient drug information. This is really interesting. Thankfully, the deadline for comment is in November because the FDA is civilized and they give you six months to comment on things. <clears throat> not every agency in the federal government is so inclined. Uh, so I've not read the full rule yet, but the idea here is that they're trying to both simplify and standardize the paper information that's given when you get a prescription medication. And they, the, they are trying to have a single page of information that's presented in a consistent format that's easy for patients to understand. It's supposed to also make it easier to translate the information in, into other languages, make it more accessible to the visually impaired. I'd like to see, I'm, I'm interested to see what they have to say on that. Um, so you can find the announcement there and the RFI in total. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the, the full RFI in the Federal Register at the second link. Any questions or comments there? 
only that it's more than welcome. I still struggle yes, to, to read the labels as they are. So good. And and good and one note, and we'll get into the we'll get into this in a later section of the meeting, but um to the best of my knowledge, it does not address electronic information. But if we do comment on this rule, then we likely would make that um suggestion that this be standardized, period. I'm thinking also of all the trees we'll save. It's just, it's a ton of, it's good for the environment because yep. besides being good language. Yeah. Yep. So, so I think that, that there, I, I would be surprised if there are, are, are other than maybe uh, people who are employed to write the existing documentation. Uh, most people will probably be very pleased to see this. So we'll, we'll come back to this later on. As you, as I said, there's a, a long period for the comment so we can, uh, come back to this at a point when it's a little bit less busy than things are right now. All right, let's go on to the next one. Another one that came out uh, is <coughs> a CMS proposal for Medicaid drug pricing and transparency requirements. Um, it basically covers transparency in three areas. Oh, excuse me. Uh, Medicaid drug pricing, the cost of managing prescriptions and managed care plans, and how drugs are classified. And this is a very short turnaround um, and NPRM. Comments are due by July 25th. Um, you can find an overview of the rule at the first link and the uh, official proposed rule in the Federal Register at the second link. Uh, have not looked at this in detail. Uh, but there are potentially things that affect us in this role. Any questions or comments there? All right, then moving on to the next one. Here's the big one. So US CDI plus for quality draft. As we've discussed before, um, there's an, uh, a new, it's not so new now, and it's starting to come to fruition, but there's there's a, a program called USCDI Plus, which is a way that ONC is coordinating with other federal agencies and other portions of HHS to come up with um, use case-based uh, data sets that can be used in regulation related to specific areas. And so, and uh, the one of the areas they've been working on with CMS is quality measures, data for quality measures. And so they've now come out with this first draft of the data set that they're proposing for this USCDI plus for quality. Um, there was some uh, confusion on the deadline for comment. Uh, I just heard back um, from them when I asked, I asked for clarification and the actual deadline for comment is June 30th, so that's good, but they did not give a lot of time. Uh, and <coughs> excuse me, what we're gonna see, uh, what I did, for those of you who need a refresher, uh, it's structured the same way as USCDI in that there are data classes and then elements within each data class. What I've done here is just list the data classes. So these are the categories of data, not the specific data elements. And it actually spans the slide and two more to give you an idea. Uh, now, some of these categories only have one data element. None of them have more than a dozen or so, uh, but it's still a fairly uh, large list of data. And the idea is that it's supposed to be the, the data that you would want to have someone be required to exchange if you were doing a quality measures data exchange. Um, and we'll come back to that this later, but if I'm not gonna read off all of the, the data classes, but as you can see, they span a wide variety of areas. They include things that are not necessarily things that have been discussed in detail or come up every day. Um, but they may be things that we've looked at. For instance, we've looked at advanced directives. We've looked at adverse events as part of our discussion of allergies and intolerances. But biologically derived product is something that hasn't come up that I can remember in any fire discussion I've had. So um, if we'll go on to the next page or just sort of pull up maybe some that look interesting, 
and have a comment. Um, you know, family health history is another one that we we've talked about being having some real interesting um, nuances in terms of how to capture. Um, one thing I point out here is that there is both a health insurance and health insurance information data class. It is not clear to me why those are separate, and that will be something that we comment on. Uh, they also make a, a different a, a distinction between non-procedural interventions and procedures. I don't know if that's necessarily um, required. Uh, and before I go on to the next page, is there anything here that jumps out at anyone on the call that they'd like to comment on or question? All right, so let's go on to the, uh, the last page. So again, here there's pregnancy information. Referrals is here. Uh, another thing that, that we haven't seen a ton of is nutrition and diet. So it's a pretty wide spanning range of categories. And again, each of these represents, you know, at least one, but often multiple data points. And you can find the full, you can find a sort of information page with a link to the full set of data um, at that ONC page that's linked at the bottom of the slide. Any questions about what this is or what the intent of this is? Janice, do you see USCDI plus being um, the replacement for USCDI at some point in time that it's going no. to be a superset or it's going to be used for just specific purposes? Yeah, so, so the idea, the way that they've proposed it, is that the US, so, so the USCDI, the regular USCDI is supposed to be a minimum set that everyone has to use. But for what they're, what they're using USCDI plus for is there are these other areas, and this is one of the first ones that they looked at, but like, for instance, it's, there might be one for public health. There are these, these are, there's specific areas that they also want, that are also very dependent on data exchange. And they want to define what the minimum floor should be for that particular type of exchange. So the idea would be that, for instance, CMS regulations that include quality measures might, instead of referencing US, um, US CDI, might reference US CDI plus for quality as the data that has to be exchanged. Okay, um, thank you. you know, public health. So that's that's the way that ONC, ONC doesn't talk about this a ton and it's not the process until they, this is the first piece that is, as far as I know, the first piece that has been public. These are, these are not public processes um, in terms of, th this is between, this is an interagency process. So the public doesn't really, can't go in and start saying, I care a lot about quality and start working on this early on in the process. This, you know, at this point, now that they put out a release, we can comment and, and you know, work around the edges at this point. And Janice, but, yes. Could I ask a question? Thank you. Sure. Um, so thank you for asking um, if we need a clarification on the intention as well. Not being familiar with the old version of this, if you will, I can see that it's for quality. But exactly how is the data used for quality? Is it just for policy input? No. So so again, the idea is that this they're defining a data set that this is supposed to be sort of the minimum acceptable data set for getting everything that you need to do quality measures related data exchange. So if the data set itself would be used by payers and providers, probably communicating with each other, but the idea is that it's defined by, by regulators and then they can impose so let's say um next That's year's right. medicare mm -hmm. advantage rule might say um in order to, to to qualify for this program that gives you this type of bonus payments or whatever um you must uh exchange data or start, you know, starting in the, the, i'm sure there'll be so many times so starting in like january 1st 2026 or something. I don't know if that's going to be the date, but that's a popular date. Uh, you must, the you know, you must start exchanging USCDI plus for quality data 
as part of meeting the requirements for this program. So the so the regulations won't will will say will reference these the idea is that regulations will be able to reference these data sets as this is the stuff that we think you need to do in order to be part of this program, part of this thing that's being defined in regulation. Perfect. And then Thank the you. data sets themselves get defined in a standards process separately. Does that make sense? Yes, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? I realized that we haven't really, we've talked about this at a very high level before, but this is really the first one that's been out there. So, all right, then let's, uh, let's move on for now. Oh, I guess you get the chance to see how the sausage is made. Um, it looks like I missed this one. So as I go through things, I start a slide like this where I don't have any information on it and I have the link to go back to. And it looks like I, I missed going back to this one in my, um, uh, everything else that's been going on this week. So I apologize. Uh, so I don't have an overview of this because I never went back to it, but the OCR has released a, report about language access uh, and you can find the report there and if people want I can flesh this out for next week uh, or I can just let you read it if you'd like. Does anyone feel a burning need for me to go through and give you some high level info about this next week? Not unless it's especially pertinent to what we're working on together. All right. So, but you can read it off of that link if you'd like. And if you'll go to the next slide and pause there. I hope you learned a lot from our quick updates. If you're interested in finding out more about the DGC and its other activities, email me at dgc at myhealthdata.org. That email address is also on the screen.